In this video I'm going to go through a couple of ways of building two inch shells. I've had a few requests in the, the comments and also via the website to do a video on shell building and specifically from some of the, the comments was to do a video on building small shells so I'll do two styles of, of two inch bowl shell in this video today. Um, firstly fusing. When I first started off there wasn't uh, so much internet around. I think that only just invented DOS so everything I learned either came from reading a book or from pulling Chinese fireworks apart and the first thing I'd, I'd learnt was that you had to light the shell from the middle gives you a, a more even break um, and usually make sure all the stars are lit before they're ejected out by the burst charge. Um, now the way to get uh, your shell to light in the middle um, is to use a pass fire. Um, originally I'd have a hemi with a hole in it or, or punch or drill a hole in it. I'd slide a bit of time fuse in there like that and to get the ignition point to the middle you'd put a, a cardboard tube over it um, and in that cardboard tube you'd pack in a, a little bit of black match which would transfer the, the fire from the, the, the shell outside to the middle when the time fuse lights. You'd do that, you'd glue that up um, and you'd either put it aside and wait or you'd, you'd build your shell. Um, a few years back I bought myself a wasp because I was building a lot of shells um, and the way you build the wasp shells I quite like and I've worked out that it ends up being a lot easier and a lot quicker even with the little two inch shells I've got here I'm still building those the same way I'd build them as if I was wrapping them on the, the wasp um, when you build a shell for the wasp no matter what size it is you start out with your shell casings with your pass fire uh, tubes already glued in and you build your shell and finish it Got a three inch shell here that's just about ready to go on the, the wasp and how you get your time fuse into that is just before you put it on the wasp for wrapping you put a couple of magnets into the pass fire tube you put a bit of tape over it you put that on the wasp it wraps it c completely when it's finished wrapping you use another magnet to find where your fuse hole is Usually just give that a little bit of a, a tap with a, a rubber mallet while the, the, the shell's still damp from being wrapped and it puts a bit of a, a mark in there on the wrap to tell you where your, your fuse hole's got to go and then you use a, a hole punch to cut out where the fuse goes in, into the pass fire tube and you slide your black match in there, put your time fuse in, glue and string that in there and your shell's good to go. Sounds like a bit of a process, but once you've done it a few times, it becomes very easy. So now when I build shells, even small ones like the two, two inch here that I'll hand wrap, the wasp will only do two and a half inch and up. So the, the two inch I've got a hand wrap, I'll still build them in the same method. Now, I've also found an easy way to get the, uh, the tubes into the shells, which saves a, a lot of time without drilling holes and, and, and bits and pieces. First step with that is to, to cut yourself a tube. This is a two inch shell. Works out you need about a three quarter inch long uh, bit of tube to do the, the pass fire in it. So if I put a tube on a, a brass rod and then just gently roll the knife down where I want it cut, cuts it nice and, and cleanly. The bit that makes this step really easy is I've got a, a six mil brass rod that's been sharpened. I've put a handle on it. You could use a, a Phillips head screwdriver as long as your, your shaft diameter is about six mil. If it's too thin it, when you push the tube through it it makes a bit of a mess. Uh, but I've got a six mil rod that's been sharpened in a handle. I, I put the, uh, the pass fire tube on the, the handle to start with, find the center of the hemi, punch the hole and then I just work that around till it pushes the, the pass fire through. That gets it nicely in the center and then when I take it off if I pull it off via the pass fire tube it leaves the tube right in the right spot um, and then it's just a, a simple matter getting a bit of wood glue Elmer's glue back with here one of those and just put a bead around and there's a little recess around the tube that's formed when you punch them that way 
put those aside, let them dry up, they only take about half an hour. Um, as you can see there, I make a few in advance and I do that for all sizes. And then when you decide you want to build some shells, you've got, uh, you've got them there. That's very quick just to throw them together. The other part about building them this way is it turns everything into little process, processes that you do. So if you're building a, a few shells, you do one step for a number of shells at a time. It ends up being a very, very quick way of, of building shells. Um, and they turn out working really well, um, very, very, very reliable. Now the first shell, uh, peony bowl shell, I've probably got about halfway there. I, I don't want to sp spend uh, a while stacking stars in, so I've got the stars stacked in the, the other half there. I've done the same with this side, but I'll finish that off. And from where the stars are there, I'll just fill that up with burst charge. That's uh, black powder on rice holes, about six or seven to, to one. So that's seven parts of black powder to one part rice holes, um, rolled up in a rolling machine. These have got silver stars in them. If I wanted to put some dragon eggs um, in, in the middle of them, I'd, I'd scoop out probably a dozen dragon eggs and have those in each side before I put the, the remainder of that burst in there to fill it up. So I'll just fill that, fill that up now, spread them out a bit. Probably leaving it a little high, it's maybe a little bit over full. Um, try and get a bit of the powdery stuff for the, from, from the bottom as well, that'll fill up all the, the gaps in around the stars. The next bit before I put those together is I'll just hold that on the bottom of a bit of wood there. Just give it a little bit of a tap down. That just sets everything to place and, and pads everything down nicely. Just give it a little bit of a and neaten up there and that's pretty much ready to go it's still a little bit on the dome side which is how I, I want it to be um, now for putting them together that's just a bit of a facial tissue I've torn it into four four bits it's also a two ply one so I've just taken the pliers apart and use one ply I just want this to be as thin as possible and all I'm really doing with that is just keeping it so it keeps everything in place so that when I assemble the shell nothing falls out and it, it's all there I'll just rip off the uh, the excess of the tissue bits we don't need holding that down nice and firm nothing in there is moving around that's ended up being nice and tight and that's how you want it so your stars stay in place that way when it breaks it'll shoot the stars out evenly in all directions and you get that nice peony effect so I've got a bit of quarter inch masking tape which I'll just go round, just round the equator of the shell there. I use thin masking tape because I find that the gum tape doesn't like to, to stick to that too well and if you're hand pasting it's better off if you've got less of the tape on there. The other part about using the tissue like that and having the, the top section over full is once you've put it together you don't get any powder or anything leaking out. It tends to seal it up. The other thing you can do, especially if you're going to if you've decided to put a bit of flash or something in there to boost it and you really want it closed up for while you're pasting it is to just stick a bit of cotton wool or even a bit of tissue in there and that's pretty easy to get out when you finish pasting it you just you have got an old fish hook or a needle or a sharp bit of a blade and that's easy enough to, to, to hook out but it just stops you getting powder everywhere <coughs> Now when they're like that, it's quite good. They're very easy to paste. You haven't got a time fuse sticking out yet, so nothing's in the way. And they get very, very easy to paste. Um, here's one that I've pasted a few few layers on. It's, uh, use a gum, gum tape, you wet it down and you paste them on. I stop a little bit short with the gum tape because I don't want too much overlap on the bottom. And as I've finished each layer of wrapping, I'll just put a little bit of tape over there just to cover that up. Um, most of the shells will get, um, if it's a peony shell, I'll give them about three wraps. And then I also put just a little wrap about a third as long as the other bits of tape just around the centre just to, to firm up the equator a bit. There's less overlap there, so I find an extra bit of tape in the middle, get some breaking nice. And you can see where I've pasted over where the tape hasn't quite joined. That one there is just a, a straight silver. We're going to finish that shell off and we'll shoot him a little bit later on. 
when you're pasting after you've gone round the shell once I usually get a pen and draw a line right around the equator of the shell that way when you start pasting the second layer of pasting on you know when you've finished the layer um, and then after that you do another line on and the next layer to go around if you're doing your three wraps three wraps on there with the overlap like that gives you five to six layers um, and that's plenty for a little shell like a, a two inch so that's pretty much got it there to where we want to be um, and pasting I won't go right into the, the pasting now um, I'll put that aside the second type of um, shell that we're going to have a look at I'd just call these for, for want of a, a better term I'll just I'll call them a junk shell um, they're a bit of a, a, a random break um, I don't stack the stars in like I do on the peony shells I've got a bowl of stars there there's mixed stars in there there's silvers there's golds there's blues greens reds um, all, all sorts of stuff all just the, the bits and pieces the leftovers and tail ends of batches of stars I throw them in a jar and then I'll make up some random shells so with those I'll just throw four or five in the bottom of there maybe one one more and I'll spoon in a bit of burst just flatten that out um, also throw about a dozen dragon eggs in there I've done that with the other other side and on top of that put another five or six or seven stars just just randomly scattered in there and then I'll top that up with with burst charge from there just get that from here on it's pretty much the same as the, the first shell we built but what will happen is when this breaks instead of getting the nice round equal equal break um, it'll be a bit more of just a random break a little bit like the uh, inserts that, that come out of a cake not not a, a full peony but they'll put a lot of sparks and a lot of color up in the air and if you launch three or four of them at the same time or in quick succession they, they look pretty good they usually do that and shoot a couple of threes or fours at the same time so you've got something happening down a bit lower and then um, you get a couple of nice big round breaks over the top of that it looks quite good just tape him up so that's pretty much how to build two types of shells your peony and just your random random breaking or your junk shell both look quite good when they they use the the peonies look um, quite good even shot singularly whereas these ones here look better if you shoot three or four at a time or or three or four or five in, in quick succession just label that one up so I know what I'm doing with him and I'll put put that aside so the next part after that is going into um, how we fuse them it's very very easy with this way we've got the, um, the little silver shell of finish there that's pretty easy I just fold up some black match to about three quarters long about four or five times I've folded that over just before I put that in I'll get a, a, a pointy stick and I'll just push down and just bush up that tissue paper not that it'll make a, a, a lot of difference but just to make sure that some fire does get through to it I've got that black match there folded up to about roughly the same length as the pass fire tube um, what I'm going to do there is next I'll put some hot glue on the, the fuse and push that in and that will come up against the, the black match and that will light the black match and shoot fire into the centre of the shell once it's lit. I'll just put that aside for a sec. I'm just waiting for the, the glue gun to, to heat up over there. While I'm waiting for the, the glue gun to heat up, um, we'll quickly whip up a lift cap, a lift, lift cup. 
that's quite easy to do. I've just got some 48 mil or, or two inch gum tape. I've cut that so it overlaps by about half an inch when I put it on this one and a quarter or one and a half or one and a quarter inch former. Um, so what I'll do there, that last half inch where it's going to overlap, just wet that down off the sponge there. Roll him up and, and stick him down. It's pretty pretty straightforward. I've got a bit of a mark on the, the former there where I normally park them. Some scissors. Now where it overlaps, I'll cut right where it overlaps. Cut that a bit wider and the other slots I'm cutting are a little bit narrower than the, the first one I've, I've cut. So where the tape's doubled up, I'll usually push that one down first and then the rest of the bits of tape, I'll just wet those down. By having that one down un unwet, it won't stick to the former and then just go around in a, a random order and fold down all the rest of the bits and pieces just round that off and that pretty much makes up your, your lift cap cup ready to go so we've got that there just put him aside i've got one here i've made a bit earlier that that one's already dry so i'll use this one once again where that uh, gum tape overlaps where I rolled it I'll just cut a notch out about the same width um, as what the black match or quick match is and I'll just cut a little notch in there and I'll just bend that out and that's so when I've put the, the black match in there and we sit the shell on it or the quick match rather we can bend that, bend that out a little bit quite easy and get a, a nice seal around the shell I've got a strip of quick match here I've cut probably or three eighths of an inch of the paper off just to expose that and bend that up at 90 degrees so when I glue him in there that's going to sit down and hang out the bottom a little bit and that'll throw a fair bit of spark out there to make sure everything burns my hot, hot glue gun's working now so I'll just put a bit of hot glue on the side of that find where I've cut the notch in just hold him there for a, a sec and once that's glued on I'll just bend that time fuse out where I've cut the, the notch so what will happen is when we put the shell in there that'll sit nice and flat okay now I've got the um, hot glue going I'll put the time fuse in I just put a bit of a bead of hot glue, probably a quarter inch from the, the end that's going into the, the shell and then just slide him in there and you can actually feel when he tightens up on the, the black match I'll just smooth off of that, that gets a little bit of hot milk glue down the, the, the tube and helps the, the time fuse stay in there when the lift charge goes off the next bit I'll do for there is put a bit more hot glue on there and while that's still melting I'll get a, a, a bit of fairly thin string and just wind that around into the hot glue. What that does is that really makes sure that the time fuse is not going to punch down into the shell when the, the lift charge goes off. I'll probably lift these fairly hard. And once I've smoothed that down, I'll just put another layer of hot glue, just not overly thick, but just enough to, to, to cover it up. And that's pretty close to having that, that shell finished. If you noticed, I've already got the, the time fuse. I've flared the end and I've, I've primed that. That's the way I do my time fuses. I've got a way worked out. Uh, that works quite well for me, so I'll, I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, from there, once your, your time fuse is in, um, we'll add, add the lift cup. So I've got about four and a little bit grams of black powder. It's granulated. 
um, the shell weighs about 42 grams so around 4 grams or 10% of its weight usually does it pretty well so I'll pour that into the lift cup where the tire, where the uh, quick match is, is going into the, the lift cup there I'll just put a, a little bead of hot milk glue and I'll put a spot just on the other other edge as well I'll put that down and then I'll just push push the two inch shell into it like that wipe off the excess glue that comes out what that's done that's just stuck the, the, the lift cap on just to help it all stay together I'll put a little bit of hot melt on the uh, on the quick mat fold that around because that's what I'll use to, to lower him in the shell just hold him there for a sec now there's a couple of little gaps where the hot milk glue didn't come out in the side I'll just fill those in with hot milk glue I don't like putting too much hot hot milk glue on the um, outside of the, the lift cup I find it ends up melting and sticking your, your lift cup to the sides and bottom of your mortar so after I've closed up the, the bigger holes there I just usually put a very very fine bead of wood glue around there take off any excess just enough to sort of cover up the holes and, and get it stuck together ends up looking a bit like that try and get that to sit sit down from there I just need to find a little bit of little bit of tape, open up the end of the quick match, slide a bit of visco in there and just tape him in. It's the, the finished two inch shell and that'll be a peony shell, it's a silver shell. I'm probably going to take that out probably in the next half hour or so, Looking, it's getting a bit dark outside. Um, I'll fire him off and I'll see if I can get a, a video of it and we can see how well I've done.